Hey friends, this is the Mrs. Wolfie from our Half Acre Homestead. And as you saw, I bought these two big beautiful pork loins from Costco this weekend. And I paid $21 for this one and $21 for this one. <laughs> about forty two dollars I mean give or take thirty cents alright so I'm gonna cut these up and y'all re requested a video of what I'm gonna do with them so I'm gonna cut them all up and I'm probably gonna put this or this end uh, into roasts for one for supper one for the freezer alright let's get to it okay so here I have one of the loins and I open it up onto a paper towel for the simple reason is I like to keep the juice to a minimum. But if you open it up the small end and turn it up and slide it out, use some gravity first, you, you can actually keep most of the juice in because it's the small end of the plastic and it's actually peeling back the juice. Anyway, here's the first loin and it does it's too long for my cutting board but i'm gonna take this piece off right here and i have my other cutting board right here now this is a little roast for daddy and i now i have my cutting board here my other cutting board here so i can stack my chops and because it's i don't want to have to touch the pork as I want to touch the pork as little as possible while I'm bagging it, so I cut it all up first. How thick do you want these chops, Father? Quarter to half. Chops? Quarter inch to half inch. Not. Three quarters? Yeah. Whatever you want. All Three right. Is a decent well, I like them a little bit thicker. thicker because then they're juicier and. Okay. Yeah. I'm the cook, so. There is one, and I like cutting them in order. Um, that okay, dear? Yeah. Okay. I like cutting them in order because the size can vary, and so when you're putting two in a package, or three in a package, or four in a package, you can. I know it looks like I'm sawing at this meat. I'm not. This knife is really, really sharp. Um, I just... I'm just uh, saving my wrist. Oh, yeah. See? And if you, you know, make them thick or thin, it all depends on you, right? But we like... I like a fairly thick chop because there isn't a lot of fat, so... Um, you want to, you know, you don't want to cook it too dry or too thin. It'll be too dry because you don't have a lot of fat, right? I like to refrigerate mine overnight so that when I make my chops, they're easier to cut. Okay. I have here, I've washed everything down. I have... Uh, two roasts and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen sets of chops. And I'm going to say, now this is $42. So let's, let's do the math. Okay, $42. Now let's say these roasts are $3 each. Minus six equals okay so that's thirty six dollars in chops uh, divided by eighteen so each supper and if you are you know you, you could have cut these a whole lot thinner but this is two dollars a meal worth of meat for papa and i and that roast it's probably less than two dollars because those roasts are probably worth more these are probably worth closer to four dollars a piece so these would be more like a buck seventy five Pretty good, eh? 
that's not bad and that's good meat so now i just take my bags if i can open them hands are getting worse now one of these roasts is going to be supper tonight i just put the bag on my hand grab my meat slip it inside out and yes i can use a vacuum my vacuum sealer but i don't feel like paying the price for bags and besides when i do it this way it really does not leave any air in the bags okay so here we have 20 meals for under $2.10. 20 meals worth of pork chops or pork for under $2.10 a meal. Now I am putting these in a paper grocery bag on which I have written the date. Well, not the date, October 2020. So that when these go in the freezer, I'll get Papa to pull out the last ones I did from the bottom of the freezer and exchange them for these. Here's a roast. And this, that's supper. Alrighty, I got my cast iron Dutch oven here. Just going to throw in a little bit of butter. And when that is sizzling, I'm going to sear my roast. And here I have um, literally 40 cents worth of carrot, a 15 cent onion, and potato, the last of the few little potatoes from my garden. I know I have a few more, but not, nothing's big enough to peel. So first, let's get our butter, butter sizzling. My oven is preheated to 325 degrees. All right, now we're just going to see how that's nice and sizzling. Now we're just going to sear our roast. Don't ask me why, it just makes the roast nicer. We're not cooking it, we're just searing it. And I'm doing that by rolling it onto the cast iron with the butter, oh my goodness, right? And then the ends, this kind of holds in the juices, doesn't it? Makes things so much more flavorful and moist if you can sear it first. And there we go. If there's any fat, which there's very little, and that's one of the reasons I'm searing it. Let's turn this pan off, it's starting to smoke. Now, I'm just going to throw these all over that. Throw Daddy's onion on there. A little bit of parsley. Now, you know why that's still doing that? Because cast iron holds the heat. That's why. A little bit of salt. A little bit of pepper. A little bit of garlic powder. You folks, you do what you do. You now. I'm just going to add a tiny bit of water now. I'm talking like a quarter cup, just to get everything going. And on goes the lid. And this is going into a 325 degree oven for about two hours. Let's have a look. Oh, look at that's gorgeous. I'm going to let that cool for a minute. Let it. And then I'm going to turn my oven up to 450 degrees and I'm going to make some quick mayonnaise muffins. You heard me right. This is one of those days where supper's a quick thing because I've been busy. Mayonnaise muffins are really, really simple. I'm going to do 25 cents worth of flour. I'm guessing at this, but it's pretty close, folks. One teaspoon of baking powder. A pinch of salt. Like quarter teaspoon. 
Now, I'm going to need a quarter cup of mayonnaise and a third of a cup of milk. Let's get the flour put away. A third of a cup of milk. That just had some flour on it. Now, don't cheap out and try and use something that isn't mayonnaise, folks. Why? You need real mayonnaise because of the egg content in it. So that's going in there. And I'm going to mix up the mayo and the milk. Just like I mixed up the flour, the salt, and the baking powder. Now this recipe is supposed to take make eight, but I cut this recipe in half. So I'll be grateful if I get, you know, four. Because it's just Daddy and I. No, I don't mean my father. I mean my husband. We're just going to stir this all together. Now, I've made these before. And I'm telling you, if you want a cheap supper, I'm telling you, folks, I don't think these muffins are more than a buck with all things considered. And that's pretty dry, so I'm going to drop this in here. If it's too dry, feel free to add more mayo or milk. So I'm just going to kind of divide it in four and just drop it down into my little... I was going to use my scoop, but that'll teach me for oiling all of the paint muffin things. So these are going in a 425 degree oven for 12 to 13 minutes. And then we'll see you guys. Well, I'm gonna make some gravy. While we're waiting for our muffins, I'm gonna pour this gravy into a gravy boat because I don't wanna waste any of it. And there are our muffins. And I guarantee you there's gonna be plenty of gravy left over to cook into something else. Are our little mayonnaise muffins. Oops. Oh, they're falling apart. Can you smell what the mama's cooking? That's awesome. Alright, a little bit of salt. Gravy overall, dear? Yep. Okay, I'm just going to poke these mayonnaise muffins. You are not going to get this from Skip the Dishes, folks. Because this entire meal for the two of us under five dollars. You don't put pepper under gravy. You think you're gonna get some of that, Grace? Of course she is. Mm. She's been waiting all day for this. Watch his hot, sweetheart. Mm -mm -mm. Now, dinner for the two of us. Five dollars or less. Maybe. Absolutely maybe. Five dollars and fifty cents for the two of us. Could you get that from Skip the Dishes or any other restaurant or takeout of that quality? No, absolutely not. All right, now bugger off and let me have my supper. There you go. This is the Miss Wolfie from our Half Acre Homestead saying that is how you save money and put good quality food on the table. Take care, God bless. It's just good home economics.